21st Precinct, Sergeant Waters. Yeah? Well, who is it, his wife? Do they live there? Well, can't somebody stop him from beating her up? What's the address there? Yeah. Yeah. You are in the muster room at the 21st Precinct, the nerve center. A call is coming through. You will follow the action taken pursuant to that call from this minute until the final report is written in the 124 room at the 21st Precinct. All right. I'll send the officers right over there. Yeah, don't worry about it. They'll be right there. 21st Precinct. It's just lines on a map of the city of New York. Most of the 173,000 people wedged into the nine-tenths of a square mile between Fifth Avenue and the East River wouldn't know if you asked them that they lived or worked in the 21st. Whether they know it or not, the security of their homes, their persons, and their property is the job of the men of the 21st Precinct. The 21st, 160 patrolmen, 11 sergeants, and four lieutenants of whom I'm the boss. My name is Kennelly, Frank Kennelly. I'm captain in command of the 21st. I was working my night tour... 4 p.m. to 8 a.m. After midnight, 33 patrolmen were assigned to regular posts, which they walked on foot. Ten others were assigned as operators and recorders in the precinct's five sector cars. These men were under the direct supervision of three sergeants. Sergeant Tierney on telephone switchboard duty in the station house, Sergeant Rosen on foot in congested districts, and Sergeant Waters on radio motor patrol in a sergeant's car operated by patrolman Mercado. The sergeants were directly responsible to Lieutenant Gorman, the desk officer on the job. One of the functions of the sergeant on radio motor patrol is to respond to every call within the confines of the precinct broadcast by the Manhattan Communications Bureau. The reason for this is twofold. To provide adequate supervision at the scene of an occurrence and to ensure the immediate response of sufficient manpower in the event the occurrence is of a more serious nature than the original call to the police indicated. At 8.05 p.m., a radio call was broadcast for sector car number three, a disturbance in the hallway at 762 East 74th Street, a four-story old law tenement. As sometimes happens, the sergeant's car was closer to the scene and the first to arrive in the block. Next to the end of the block down there. Yes, sir. Oh, it doesn't look like there's much to it, Sergeant. Supposed to be inside the hall. Okay. Let's go. Yes, sir. I don't see anything. Come on. There's nothing. Yeah. Did you call a cop, lady? Yes, it was me. What's the trouble? Him, the crazy one, third floor to the rear. Yeah? He was beating her and kicking her and pulling her up the stairs. Who? His wife, the poor thing. It's all quiet now. He must have settled it. Oh, he probably settled it by killing her. That's how he settled it. He's crazy. He's crazy enough to kill her. What's their name? Gerard. Mr. and Mrs. Gerard. He never seen anything like the way he beats up that poor woman. Did any of the other neighbors hear this? Oh, I don't know whether they did or not. I don't know whether they care even. All I know is that I'm tired of it, sick and tired of it. He comes home crazy and beats her to an inch of her life. Tonight in the hall. Bad enough in their own flat, but tonight you have to do it in the hall. There's only one flat in the rear and the third floor? Yes, that's all. Just one apartment. He ought to be locked up for good, that man. Or better, sent back to the insane asylum. That's where he belongs. Was he there? Well, I wouldn't say a thing like that if he wasn't. Oh, he's that way, all right. He don't like my cat. I think he poisoned one once. I think he poisoned Cynthia. I swear it was him. Yeah. Well, it seems to have quieted down now, but we'll go up and talk to him. Ask him if he didn't poison Cynthia. I bet he denies it. I just bet he does. What's your name, lady? M- Mrs. Asher. Mrs. Helen Asher. E-S-H-E-R. He had no business poisoning Cynthia. No business at all. All right, Mrs. Asher. You get back inside and we'll we'll take care of it. You send him back to that insane asylum now. That's where he belongs. You send him back there. All right, just close the door. We'll see you in a minute. I will, but don't you forget. You too, young man. We won't forget. All right, if you promise. Okay. Well, it's going to be a great debate who's the psycho in this case, Sergeant. Yeah. Put your light on the mailbox there. Yes, sir. Well, if he's got the right name, Gerard. First floor rear. 
Uh, let's see what they have to say. Well, you know something, Sergeant? I don't think that cat was poisoned at all. I think it committed suicide. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you've got a point. Mm.
I don't want to talk it over. Come on, now. Open the door. Get away from there. I don't want to have to kill you. Open up and we'll talk it over. I'm warning you. Come on. You can't say I didn't warn you. No, I... I can't say that. And it won't do you any good to count the shots I fire either because I've got a pocket full of bullets and the gun is always loaded. I'm not going to run out of bullets. You can put that down in your book. What's your wife doing, Mr. Gerard? What? What's your wife doing? It's none of your business. Is she in there? Of course she's in there. Where'd you think she'd be? Sergeant? Who is it? Sergeant. I'm right in. You want me up there? Post yourself down there at the front door. Keep the people out of the hall. Okay, Sergeant. Who are you talking to? Another police officer. Oh. Is your wife close to you there? She's right here, yes. Right here, in the living room. I'd like to talk to her. No, I couldn't let you do that. Why not? I couldn't let you do it, that's all. I'm sorry about all this. I don't like to cause anyone trouble. All you got to do is open the door. But I, I guess I've got a good excuse. I was in the state hospital, you know. Oh, were you? That's for people who are sick. A person can have a sick mind just as he can have a sick heart or a sick lung. He's ill, and, and, he, and he can get better. Did you know that? Yeah, I know it. But that's exactly what the doctor told me, and I, I'm glad you realize it. Not, not many people realize that. I want to talk to your wife, Mr. Gerard. Why do you want to talk to her? I just wanted to tell her not to worry. I want to tell her that you won't hurt her anymore. What? I want you to promise me you won't hurt her anymore. I promise you. I give you my word of honor. All right. Now, how about opening the door? No, I couldn't do that. And don't you try it either. I warned you before, and I'm warning you again. I won't try it. You better not. You want to know what's good for you? The only thing is I'm worried about your wife. You don't have to worry about her. I killed her. Uh, a minute ago, you said she was right there. But she is right here, right here, where I killed her. Ah, uh, you wouldn't do a thing like that, Mr. Gerard. I did it. I just couldn't stand it another minute. She could have realized that I have feelings, too. After all, she can't treat me like that. Somebody's got to respect you, or, or you're a monster. Nothing in this world, nothing at all. And they try to make you dig, dig under their feet. And I'm tired of all that. There comes a day where, when a man has got to assert himself. Yeah, Mr. Gerard. And this is sure your day. You are listening to 21st Precinct, a factual account of the way police work in the world's largest city. Now back to 21st Precinct and Captain Tonelli. Within a few minutes, a radio motor patrol car from the adjoining sector, detectives and an emergency service car equipped with tools and tear gas responded to the scene. Men were placed on every floor of the building, on the roof, on the fire escape, and in the rear courtyard, all on the instructions of Lieutenant Matt King, commanding officer of the 21st Detective Squad. When the second call went out over the radio, I was in the office of a public dance hall on York Avenue discussing with the manager complaints of rowdiness we had received concerning some of his patrons. The call was heard by Patrolman Farrell, who was waiting downstairs in the car. He came into the manager's office and gave me the information. I rang into the station house, and after Lieutenant Gorman, the desk officer, gave me whatever information he had, we made the run. There were now six department vehicles on the scene, and the sidewalk was crowded with curious civilians. Three men were on the job keeping the crowd moving as I walked into the building where Patrolman Mercado was posted at the door. Hello, Captain. Mercado? Where's Lieutenant King? Upstairs? No, sir. He's down here in that flat back there. He's talking to the woman who called in with the original complaint. Okay. Oh, uh, yes, sir. What about the wife? Well, the man keeps saying he killed her. All right. Is uh, that where Lieutenant King is? Yes, sir. 
Captain. The landlord would know how long they've been here. Oh, the super. This is Mrs. Helen Escher, Captain Kennelly. Mrs. Escher? How do you do? Mrs. Escher, you know for a fact that he's been a patient in a mental institution? Well, his wife told me herself, poor soul. Where's he work? Do you know that? I think it's down in Wall Street someplace for an insurance company. He doesn't have much of a job, a little clerk or something like that. He was the one that brought in most of the money. He was always taking time off and being sick and things like that. Hanging out at the bar and grill down at the corner there. Well, I knew something like this was going to happen. I could just feel it. No matter what he did to her, the cruelest thing even, she would brush it off and go right on being civil to him. His sickness, she said. Well, you see what loyalty got her, don't you? Yeah, not much. I'm telling you, he was beating her within an inch of her life on the stairs. I just couldn't stand by and see her take it like that. I just had to call the police once and for all. Oh, all right, Miss Fletcher. Thank you. Do you really think he murdered her in cold blood like that? He says he did. Oh, man. He should have been put away long ago. Long ago. That's what she gets for trying to be loyal. I told her. She can't say I didn't tell her. Well, we better see what we can do about him. You be careful now. Don't let him kill you, too. Don't try not to. Okay, Captain. Yeah. Glad to have met you. Thank you. All right, you two come with us. You stay down here. All right, sir. How many shots has he fired, ma'am? Four, Captain. Machado. Yes, sir. Keep him upstairs with us. Yes, sir. He fired four shots. He told Sergeant Waters he had a pocket full of ammunition. Did he shoot his wife? We don't know how he killed her. If he did, Carter and Sergeant Waters were here within two minutes after the call was put out. Oh, I see. Well, Captain. Captain. Gail, Bender. Hello. Next floor, Captain. The couple was in their flat already. Sergeant Waters heard no shot. I don't want anybody hurt over this, man. I think we can take him without anybody getting hurt. Good. That's it. First door up there. Stay close to the wall, Captain. Hello, Sergeant. You men hold it there. Okay, Lieutenant. You've been talking to him, Sergeant? Yes, sir. Think he wants to come out now? Give him no sign of it. Uh, Mr. Gerard. Mr. Gerard. What have we got out there? More policemen? Look, Mr. Gerard. And you've got policemen on the fire escape, too. You're making a big mistake, you know. You're forcing me to kill someone else. I don't want to kill anyone else. It's going to be your fault. Everything's going to be your fault. Well, how about unlocking this door and coming out? Then no one else will get hurt. You know I'm not going to do that. You have to do it if you want to get your wife to the hospital. I didn't say I wanted anything like that. My wife is dead. No use taking her to the hospital. You better go away. Leave me alone. Captain. He wasn't kidding. I see all four shots came through the door. Yeah, he meant it all right. Sergeant. Yes, sir. Come here a second. Okay, Lieutenant. Keep your eye on the door, Mercado. Yes, sir. I'm getting a little impatient with this guy. Well, that's better than getting shot. Yes, sir, it sure is. How much do you think it would take to kick that door in, Sergeant? Not much, Lieutenant. One good boot at the lock. Unless he has an extra bolt on it or a chain. Yeah. Well, what's he going to do while I'm kicking the door in? I was thinking about having the ESP men crack that window from the fire escape, dropping a gas shell in there. If he does any shooting, it'd be toward the fire escape. We could have the door open in the meantime. Sounds all right, Lieutenant. But when he starts shooting, how am I supposed to know whether he's shooting toward the door or toward the window? No. What do you think about the wife? You think she's dead in there? He keeps saying she is. I believe him. Let's go up to the roof, take a look at the situation on the fire escape, okay, Captain? Yeah, sure. Better get back on the door, Sergeant. If he talks, I want him to talk to you. Okay, Lieutenant. All right, Captain. All right. These guys can be a lot more trouble than a red-hot gunman. Yeah. Well, you don't have to worry about hurting a gunman, man. And you know you have to take a chance. That's the only way. Mm. This fellow's sure full of fight. Yeah, I guess he is. You mind keeping those people behind the doors? Yeah, Lieutenant. Tell me, uh, how long was he confined, Matt, do you know? Best information we can get, he was up there nearly four years. Why'd they let him out? That's the first question I'm going to ask. Oh. Now watch it. Big step down on the roof. Yeah. Back that way. The, uh, window of the room he's in opens onto the fire escape, hmm? Yes, sir. Well, maybe we'll be able to work it. 
I think so, Captain. Now watch it here. Yeah, I'll go for it. Uh, you've uh, got a blank brick wall facing this building. Wild shots won't hurt anyone. No. Who's down there? There's Colleen to look in two emergency service men. Are you staying away from the window? Yes, sir. This is far enough, Captain. No. Colleen. Yes, sir. Come on up here a minute. Yes, sir. Have they been able to get a look into the room from the window, Matt? He's got the shade drawn down to the bottom. The window's locked. Oh, I see. The only thing they can see is that there's a light on in there. Mm-hmm. Nothing else. Yes, sir. Hello, Captain. Slowly. What's the situation? No change, Lieutenant. Mm. All right, we're going to try something in a few minutes. Yes, sir. We're going to drop a couple of gas shells through the window. In the meantime, the front door will get kicked in. Okay, Lieutenant, fine. It's getting pretty cold out here. Here's how we're going to do it. One ESD man down there has a crowbar. The other one's got the tear gas. Yes, sir. All right, now we'll use the crowbar to knock out the window and drop the shell in. As soon as it takes effect, we'll hit the front door. Yes, sir. And I want everybody out here to stay undercover. He'll probably be shooting this way. Don't try to come in the window. Not until you're sure he's under control. I don't want any dead heroes. Yes, sir. All right. Come on back down there, Chloe. Let you know when we're ready. Right, sir. I'll be here. Okay, Matt. You know it works. Yeah. I think I ought to stay out here with these men. You handle the situation in the hall. That all right, Captain? Okay. It's going to take pretty close timing. Well, I think all you have to do is know we're set before you break the glass. I'll send a man up to pass the word, okay? Okay. All right, Matt. I'll see you. Captain. Yeah. Yeah, Matt. Got to be fast. It will be. Okay. Captain? I'm coming down, Mercado. It's nice to ring into the house, sir. Lieutenant Gorman told him to tell you that Inspector McBride is on his way. Oh, and the PC has been notified. Uh, it'll probably be all over by the time they get here. Anything doing in there, Sergeant? I had a couple of words with him, that's all. Nothing new, Captain. Well, okay, here's the story. Yes, sir. When they break the window on the fire escape and drop in a tear gas shell, we'll kick in the door. Okay? Yes, sir. I guess it's got to be okay. You think uh, right about at the lock ought to do the trick, hmm? Yes, sir, that ought to do it. Unless, like I said, he's got a slide bolt with a chain on there, too. All right. You talk to him. See if he's still at the door. Yes, sir. Oh. Mr. Gerard. Mr. Gerard. What is it? Don't you think we've been out here long enough now? How about opening the door and talking to us? I'm talking to you. But this can go on all night, you know. McConnell. Yes, sir. We don't want to be we'll go on up to the night. roof. Tell Lieutenant King we're set any time he's ready. Now, go what on. do you say? Yes, sir. Now, how about it? We've been at this long enough, and so have you. No, not me. I'm going to stay here forever. Forever. That's a long time. I know it. I know it's an awful long time, but I'm going to stay here. Okay. So can we. That's your business. Get set, Sergeant. Yes, sir. I'm set. I'll wait for the glass. All you have to do is go away and leave me alone. I'm not bothering you. I don't bother anyone. No one at all. Just go away. Do all you have to do. There it goes. Get away from there. Hold it. Get away! I'll tell you! Not yet. Not yet. What are you doing? What's that? Hold it, yeah. What are you doing to me? Get that out of here. Get in the house. What are you doing? I want it done. Here they come. You didn't have to do it. Oh, 
Okay, this is good. You could have just let me alone. All I wanted was a little peace, that's all. Just a little peace. I guess she's dead all right, Captain. Of course she's dead. That's what I've been telling you. Can't anyone believe me, not even when I'm telling the truth. All right, Mr. Garage. They don't believe me. And they don't respect me. Nobody. Nobody at all. So what am I going to do? I don't know what I'm going to do. You don't have to worry about what you're going to do, Mr. Gerard. It'll all be done for you. Twenty-first precinct, Sergeant Waters. Yeah. Well, how'd they break in? Yeah. Yeah. Now what's missing? Oh, yeah? Well, what's the name of the owner there? Oh, he does, huh? Is CB putting out a call on it? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me know about that. Okay. Now, I'll notify the detectives and let you know. Yeah. All right. And so it goes, around the clock, through the week, every day, every year. A police precinct in the city of New York is a flesh-and-blood merry-go-round. Anyone can catch the brass ring, or the brass ring can catch anyone. 21st Precinct, a factual account of the way the police work in the world's largest city, is presented with the official cooperation of the Patrolman's Benevolent Association an organization of more than 20,000 members of the Police Department, City of New York. Everett Sloan in the role of Captain Kennelly, Ken Lynch as Lieutenant King, Harold Stone as Sergeant Waters. Featured in tonight's cast were Ethel Everett, Frank Moss, Bill Quinn, and Eric Dressler. Written and directed by Stanley Niss. Produced for CBS Radio by John Ives. Art Hannah speaking.